Hello friends, so today in this video, we will discuss the first three problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 56. So let's start. The first problem is count square sum triplets. So the problem is just telling you that you have to find out the number of triplets a, b, c such that a square plus b square is equal to c square. Now what you can see in this example or like from this problem is always go down to the constraint. The constraint is n is equal to like 250. So what you can understand from this is like you can do an O of n cube, n cube approach. So what you can simply do in this problem is just do a nested uh, for loop three times such that just take your a from 1 till n, b from 1 till n and c till 1 to n because a, b, c, n should be from 1 till n and just find out every possible triplet check that whether this condition is hold by the triplet yes yes then the answer is like count the triplets else just move up, move forward so total the total number of triplets you will find out then uh, take three nested for loops for a b c and c and this i square plus j square whenever it becomes equal to k square then the total will increment for that triplet because you have found out a triplet then the answer is just print out the total number of triplets in the end so now the second problem is the second problem is that you are actually given some sort of a grid. The problem name is nearest exit from entrance in a maze. So you are given some sort of a grid and you are given some uh, entry point at which you enter the grid. Now the grid consists of a plus and dots. Dot means that there is a uh, like place in which you can move and plus means it's a wall. Now from this particular entry position you have to get out to the closest exit position. The excess position like the exit position should be on the boundaries also it, like uh, ensure that if you entered from one bound boundary point so let's assume that in this problem you entered from this point which is fine but let's assume that if you entered from this boundary point you cannot take this as the exit point also i hope you get the point so if you entered at some boundary point you cannot take that as an exit point you have to somehow go to some another exit point so if you find out some exit point you have to find out the smallest exit point if you find out one if there are multiple exit points or else if you cannot find out any exit point the answer is minus one so as you can see uh, in this if you entered at this point now you cannot get out from the same point so the answer is minus one because you cannot uh, find out any value or any block which is on the uh, like the grid boundaries which is uh, like taking you out of this grid so i hope you get the point so uh, the best technique to find out because the uh, constraints are also small so the best technique to find out the shortest path in a 2d grid if, the, if there are no weights so if, uh, as you can see we are finding out a possible path from a till b and you have to find out the smallest path possible so always remember the like the algorithm you want to use is bfs so you can just use a simple bfs in this way so how does a bfs works it takes the initial point and what you'll do you will so as you can see bfs moves in a level order traversal what i mean by this is let's assume that if you have some this as a starting point then and you mark it out that this is the zero distance okay then it marks out that if this is a valid point this is one distance away this is one distance away this is one distance away and this is one distance away then you move from this point to all the other distances on the left right top bottom left right top bottom if that block is already visited then you will leave it out because the bread first search always give the shortest path as possible so that's the like advantage for bread first search so uh, the simple technique for this is first find out what is the distance it will take from the starting point to reach every point which is available to you like the point which you can reach so from this point you can reach this point this point this point you cannot reach this point so mark out every point is unvisited start your bfs from the entry point and mark out all the positions which you can if you somehow reach the boundary point then that's the particular answer which is fine because you have reached at the minimum point possible minimum path possible because bfs always give you the shortest path else if you cannot then the answer is minus one okay so i can directly take you to the code part now so in bfs if you know how the bfs run you will use a queue for that so what you can use here is first find out the dimensions of the maze which is uh, like n and m which is i just make them a global variable uh, it is up to you you can make it global or not then i have to make a scene variable or like a scene dimension uh, 2d matrix which is actually used to find out whether the particular cell is visited or not so because the dimensions are up to 10 to 100 like not 100 to 100 up to 100 
so that's why I make the seal like this uh, matrix 105 and 105. Uh, this is a is valid function. I will tell you more. So uh, this is the starter function. So first mark out the whole matrix as because I haven't seen any point. So mark it out false. Mark it out the whole matrix false. The scene, the scene matrix only. Now uh, this is the direction vector because from each point you have four possible direction. You can go up, down, left, right. So that's what I marked here. And because you are starting at the particular entrance point, so because you are starting at that point, that point is already visited. So if you start from some word particular entry point that point is visited then you'll go from that point to top left and like right and bottom okay also remember that i will push all of these positions in the queue so if you haven't watched any bfs code you can like pause this video out and understand how a bfs works and then you can come to watch this video so what we'll actually do in a bfs is we take some certain point and check that whether it is valid if it is valid then mark it out and push all the next valid points in the queue and that's how the bfs like runs so this is a queue and because i've marked the initial point starting entrance point i have marked this true so i will push that point which is this entry point in this queue but remember that i am not pushing out only the entrance point but i'm also passing out what is the distance from that starting point to that particular point is which is zero because I have to also mark out the smallest number of points I have to take. Now I will do this particular while loop till the queue will become empty. So the, we have to first pop out the first element from the queue in BFS and then what we'll do I have two options okay so if this particular point I am on so it, queue tells that okay now I have to iterate over this particular point uh, in this whole list. If this particular point is on the boundaries so if how we can check that it is boundary so if any point is on the boundary then the column of that index so as you can see if any point is on the boundary then the cell column if it is 0 or m minus 1 or any cell which has the row as 0 or n minus 1 then it is obviously on the boundary so we'll check that if it is on the boundary then I have to also check that if it is on the boundary but that point should not be the entry point so that point should not be the entry point if it is the entry point we just move ahead else if we find out a point which is not the entry point and now we have on, like we are on the boundary while doing this iteration over the queue then we'll return out the minimum steps which is stored in the so this is the F F means like I have popped out the queue part okay from the uh, like from the queue so this is f of 0 which is the entry point I am on f0 and f1 and f2 is the point which is the distance I am on so f2 will return out from that point else if we have checked that okay I have not returned out from this whole iteration part then what we'll do we'll go in the next level of bfs in which I have iterated over the particular level so let's go to the next level so how we can go to the next level we'll iterate over the particular point in all the four directions so the new x and new y uh, I've marked out the direction vectors so I will take that particular x y and add the direction vectors to it now before going to the next iteration I have to also check that whether the particular direction vectors are valid or not so this is the is valid function the new x and y if they are only valid which is like they are true then only I will mark that because they are true I have to go to the next iteration I will mark this as true and I will push back those vectors like those uh, coordinates and plus one because see now I have to go from that particular level to next level. So next level is plus one. If this level is uh, as a distance one away from the starting point, the next level is two distance, the next level is third distance and so on. So I have to mark or like add one to it. So as you can see the F2 is a distance itself. So I have to add one to it and the new uh, X and Y I have to push back into the queue. And how this is valid function is working. So I have to check that the coordinate which is like the surrounding coordinates for the point I am on. It should be inbound. If it is inbound and also I should not have been processed over it earlier that point I sh like which I should be moving on next it should not be visited so the visited of that should be false and also the point should be the point on which I can iterate it should not be a wall so the maze point of that should be a dot it should not be a plus sign then only that point is valid okay I can go to the next iteration I hope you understand the logic part and the code part for this problem if you have any doubts you can mention down let's move on to the problem now the third problem is some game it actually tells that Alice and Bob are playing a game now you are given a string of even length 
Now in even length, that string consisting of some numbers and some question marks. Now Alice and Bob's are playing alternatively. The first chance is for Alice. Now in every chance, what they'll do, they will choose any question mark and replace it with any integer of their choices. So from zero till nine. Now what they'll do is after doing replacing all the question marks with the integers, what they'll do is they will check that if the total sum of the integers in the left half, left half because it is an even length string, so from zero till n, like n divided by two, and from n divided by two till uh, uh, like n is the right half, and the first is the left half. So if the left half sum is equal to right half half sum, then what will happen? Bob will win. Else Alice will win. So as you will tell, so Alice want to win, also Bob will also all to like also want to win. So they will play optimally, and you have to somehow tell that. If this is the game, if this is the given string, who will win? So Alice will take the first chance. Now, what you can simply uh, see in this example, just first is the examples. If there is no question mark at all, then just find out a total number of sum of the left half and right half. If uh, they are same, then the answer is Bob will win, else Alice will win, which is like simple. Now, the next thing here is, see, I have to somehow also find out the total number of question marks in left half and right half. And also a total number of sum in the left half and right half, so that I have, I have to somehow switch out like switch these uh, exclamation mark or question marks to match them out. See, now what you can easily, easily understand is if Alice is the last one who is doing the chance. So let's assume that there is only one question mark. Okay, so let's assume that this is two, two, and two and question mark. So this sum is four, and this sum is two. Now, because Alice will play the first chance, and Alice will win when the total sum is not same. So it means that Alice somehow always manages out to make this sum not same. If she put two, then obviously that sum will become same. But in that case, Alice will lose. So Alice will, can make this three. It can she can make it four or five, anything. So she has a lot of options to win. So as you can see, if Alice is the last one who has the chance to move, so let's say that. In which move Alice will win? So as you can see now, if the total number of question marks is odd, then obviously Alice is the last one who has to like who will move the chance. So as you can see, if there are three question marks, so first chance is Alice. She can put two. Now Bob will also put two. So in the last chance, Alice will always have a chance, and thus in that case, Alice will uh, like always win. But in all the other cases, what will happen here is. The other cases can be, I have to somehow balance out the total number of weight on the left half or on the right half. So, uh, in that case, what you can easily understand is first talk about the different cases. So, what will happen is first find out the total number of sums in the left half and in the right half. So, just assume that this is the left half. It has this question mark, and so if the total number of question mark is odd, then obviously Alice will win. If the question number is even, so as you can see now it is even. So. In in that case, Bob will has the last chance to move. So in that case, what will happen when when Bob will have the last chance? He can somehow get the total sum equal to the final answer. So what will happen here is there is some. Uh, so as you can see, this is uh, odd length. Okay. So, yeah. So as you can see, in this the total length is even, which is like this. We have to first find a total sum in the left half, which is two, and the right half is odd is also two. Now, if Bob, so as you can see. If Alice will put two here, Bob will also put two here. If Alice put two here, then Bob will put three here, or like also two here, and Bob will win because the total sum will become same. So as you can see, in that case, Bob will win. So what what like Alice will do here is, if the total sum. So as you can see now, if these are question marks. Now if they are question marks, if the total sum of left part, if the total sum of the left part is so high that you in the question marks also. Bob cannot match that part. Then only Alice will win. Else, Bob can somehow matches the total sum. I hope you get the point. So the point is, Alice wants to. So uh, what will we? What we'll check here is. So let's assume that this part has question mark, and th this total sum is uh, four. Okay, and this part is equal to uh, what you can say, four, four and three. So what you can see in this problem is like because there are two question marks on only one half, which is left half, and this part has a larger sum. Okay, so if this part is only having smaller sum, one, one, and one, now because the total sum on the right side is three, 
and the total sum on the left side is 4. Now, even if I change the question marks to 0, 0 only, na, then only the total sum will be 4. I hope you get the point. So, this, if I choose any number, the total sum will only increase or remain the same. It will not decrease. So, and also because in that case, I cannot match the total sum. And in that case, Alice will obviously win. So, I only want that if I have some question marks on one side and no question marks on other side. So, uh, so what will happen here is if there is only question mark on one side and no question marks on the other side, the like if this side has no question marks, then this side total sum should be greater. And the total size is greater. Let's say the total size, total sum of this side is 18. So Alice and Bob will be in a mode to make this total size 18. Now, in because this size, the total sum of this side is smaller, what like what Alice strategy will be to put zero in her turn. If she puts 0, then the total sum will not increase. So Bob can only increase the total sum. And Bob will try to put 9. Why? Because Bob want to like reach this 18. Okay. And Alice do not want. So Alice will try to put 0. Such that she can like she will try to decrease the sum. Which is like put the sum as the smallest possible. And Bob will put 9. So Bob will only win when the total number of question marks here is let's assume uh, even which is like 2. So in how many turns Bob will like, so if there are two question marks, first Alice will move, then Bob will move. So how many chances Bob have? This divided by two. It's like if there are four question marks, then Bob has two chances. And in both the chances, Bob will put nine. So which is like 18. So, and Alice will put zero. If this sum accounts to 18, then only Alice, like Bob will win. Else, like Bob cannot win. I hope you get the point. So that's the whole logic for this problem. So I can show the code part now. It becomes a little bit lengthy, but uh, it's not too difficult to understand. So first find out the left half sum and the right half sum, and the left blanks and the right blanks. So we first find out that. Then if the total number of blanks are all zeros, like there are no question marks, then if the bo both sum is same, then Bob will win, else Alice will win. If the total number of blanks, left blank plus right blank, if they are odd, then obviously Alice will win in every chance. Else the other case can be. There are some blanks on the left hand side and some blanks on the right hand side. So what I, what I can do here is first subtract out the extra blanks. What I mean by extra blanks is. So let's assume that there are some question marks here and there are question marks here. First chance is Alice. So Alice will can put two here. So Bob will again so just copy it out. So Bob will put two. Alice will put three and Bob will put th three. So in that case, Bob will obviously win because Bob is just matching her part out. So in that case, if there are some question mark on the left side and some question mark on the right side, they will cancel out because they are not adding in any benefit because what Alice will do, Bob will do the same thing and it will cancel out. And in that case, Bob is trying to uh, like maximizing his chance of winning. So we just subtract out the common blanks on the left and right side. If we subtract, so let's assume that the left side has five blanks and the right side has three blanks. So subtract out three from both sides such that because if there are three blanks here and three blanks here, Bob and Alice will do the same thing. And after that, two blanks are only left on the left side and no blanks are remaining on the right side. So now it means that only two blanks are there on the left side and the total sum on the left and right window. So I have to somehow increase my left sum to make it equal to right sum. So that's the motive for Bob. So I just subtract on that. Now I have two options, whether my left blanks are remaining or the right blanks are remaining. If the left blanks are remaining, I have two cases. The first case can be if the left sum is somehow only greater than right sum such that because I have left blank, I will only increase the left sum. But if the left sum is so greater that I cannot increase it more so that I will obviously lose. So in that case, the answer is like Alice will win obviously. Else the other case can be find out how many chance Bob has. So Bob has left blanks divided by two, which I've told you. And in all those chances, he will put nine. So if this equals to a difference between the left and the right, which is like the difference between them. If they are same, in that case only Bob will win, else Alice will win. And we'll do the same thing on the right side also. So that's the whole logic for this problem. It seems difficult in the code part, but if you understand the logic part, then it will become clear. I hope you understand the logic and the code part for all the three problems. If you have any doubts, you can mention down.